Hello everyone, I'm Anna Mae, and if I sound sick, it's because I am sick. Today I'm going to be talking about how I got an internship at the United Nations. Now I know the title probably says how to get an internship at the UN, but let me be honest, nobody can answer that question. Uh, that's way too complicated. Obviously I'm only able to tell you how I got an internship, or what I did previous to being offered one because, you know, as I'll kind of talk through it, you'll realize it was kind of fluke. Um, I, if you're completely new to this, I'm Anna Mae, I'm Irish, I'm sick right now. I interned at UNHQ from January through June of this year, uh, 2019, and I was in the webcast unit, which is in the news and media division in the Department of Global Communications, which is a part of the Secretariat, so I was in the Secretariat building in New York City at UNHQ. So I've posted a lot on my Instagram, which is at anime.yt. Follow it here! Pretty active on Instagram. Um, but. I get asked all the time how to get an internship at the UN, people want help with their applications and stuff like that and you know sometimes I wish I could help but I honestly see a lot of mistakes in what I did already like in the past I don't know how I ended up with this internship let me just put that out there as well before we really get into things but yeah I have no idea why they chose me uh, but again we'll kind of talk about that. So I'm gonna go through some of the questions that I get asked most frequently. I have my phone here and I'm gonna pull up some of the frequently asked questions as well as some that maybe make sense. And I'll just give you tidbits of information that I know, but yes, I cannot answer the question, this title as to how to get an internship at the UN uh, because things are complicated, okay? Also, I never hired anybody, how would I know? But I'll help as best I can. So one thing I get pretty frequently is people asking how long it took from application to hear back. I know this because, you know, that's a hard game to play because I was in the US on a one year graduate visa actually. That's a whole nother situation, story time, that's gonna happen. I didn't, well, it wasn't the best system, I'll say that. But uh, I was applying to a lot of internships. I applied to 50 plus, close to probably 60 different internships. Um, and I heard back from one other than the one that I got. And I heard about that in like early February. So for me, I searched actually just a couple minutes ago and I found the original emails. So I applied for my internship on the 1st of November. Now obviously this was not the first internship I had applied to, I'd been doing this in September. But I applied to the internship I ended up getting on the 1st of November. I heard back from my to be boss on the 18th of December. So it's like a pretty quick turnaround. Um, but I know that it differs hugely from position to position. So when I'm saying position, I mean internship spot available where, you know. Uh, some it takes a lot longer to place people, you know, uh, they'll have a much longer run in, some are much more short term. I just got lucky with this. I thought I had applied to more UN internships than I actually had, but I had applied to six uh, as part on Inspira, which I will get to in a second, and then one with the UN Foundation. So um, there were seven UN internships in total. And I didn't hear anything back from any of the others at all. Uh, and I have heard of people, someone told me, I don't know how true it is honestly, because it kind of sounds like an exaggeration to me, but uh, apparently someone applied for a 40 different internships and didn't hear back from any of them. So it seems that like 15 seems to be an average number, uh, because people just cast a wide net honestly when they're applying. So keep that in mind, but that was the turnaround time I had to hear back from that for that internship and it was the email actually, this is another thing, is like how, like do you interview, when's your interview, you know, is it video interview, how do you do these things? I was never interviewed. Uh, I got an email and now what, this was very stressful at the time because I was actually moving to Washington DC up until this point uh, and I left Ireland on the 27th of December so this is, uh, how many days is that? 
nine before I left, so that was like, but very happy to have it. Uh, so it says, Dear Anna, that's my name is Anna May. Uh, in reference to your application, my application number for internship, the United Nations attached, uh, blah blah blah, is now reviewing ca internship candidates for UN Web TV. That's where I ended up. At the moment, we are looking for candidates that are available for a minimum of five to six months internship and could start working full time from the period of 15th January to, you know, such and such, blah, blah, blah. So it didn't say, hey, you have the internship. It said, like, can you do this much? And I was like, yes. And then they said, OK, your tuberculosis certificate that you don't have it and my degree certificate or proof of enrollment and something else. I can't remember what it was. So they asked for those right away so that they could give me an official offer. Uh, so that's what it was. It wasn't, I, I, other people did do an interview that I've spoken to. Other people did interview. So I can't give you advice on that because I simply didn't have one. I was just, I'd like that. Like the biggest thing I get um, is, the two biggest things actually I get are what departments and how do I apply? So you apply on, Inspira. I don't know the exact web address. I believe it's still called Inspira. I will link it down below. I will put some of it on screen or something. Uh, but Inspira is the portal that is used for all job applications at the UN. And it's not just for interns, it's for all positions, I believe. Uh, they keep everything very above board and transparent. So that's why they use things like this. And once you create your Inspira account, you don't have to change many things to apply to more. You would just put a different cover letter, perhaps, uh, you know, speaking about why you think you're suited to that internship, or maybe you might alter something. I don't think you attach a resume because I think you fill in. What's the word I'm looking for? Those things. Fields. You fill in the fields. Uh, and, you know, you do all that sort of stuff um, on your Inspira account. So people have asked me, what did I attach? Like, did I attach short-term work certificates? And I was like, I what that so I I got a certificate actually when I finished at the UN and I believe it's commonplace in countries to give you a certificate when you've completed your work somewhere um that's not the case here I don't know how relevant it is to like how important is it that there's like definite proof of a certificate um I didn't attach any certificates because I didn't have any from my previous employment um and yeah so I don't know that's your prerogative, you know, you can attach those if you want. I don't know what your file limit is, but I don't think it's that necessary. But people are like, what certificates did you attach? Like, I'm not attaching like my ballet exam certificates, do you know what I mean? Because that's really what I have to my name, other than my degree. So, uh, yeah, I did that. I believe I attached my transcript. Um, honestly, it's because my grades are pretty good, especially in my like IOR type international politics type uh, classes so I was like I'm gonna attach that also my degree if you are wondering this comes up a lot was a joint major in politics and information and social computing so that's kind of a mouthful but yeah it's, a, it's not a double major it's a joint degree so it's like one major so that's why it was in three years I'm only 22 right now and I graduated a year ago. That's another big question. So I think I attached my transcript, but I don't think I attached any other certificates. And I, I really don't think you'd have to either. It's, I don't think it's something you'd fret about, but put your work experience down, no matter what it is. Because another thing people ask is like, what experience I have? And you know, I would come across people online who are part of different like academic programs or they get different roles for certain things. And they're all like so accomplished. And I had a conversation actually, I don't know if you'd call it a conversation, uh, with someone another intern at work who, I don't know what we were talking about, and she was like, oh, well, I did, you know, I wrote for these people, and I did this, and I interned here, and I did that, and she was listing off, I don't want to give specifics, but she was <laughs> listing off all these, like, accolades, and all these things she did, and she's like, I guess that's why I'm here. And I was like, um, I danced all through secondary school, didn't do super well in secondary school, because I didn't give a shit. Uh, I did pretty well in college, like, okay well, but I was a joint major, and I was on a competitive dance team all three years. And that's what I did as an extracurricular. I'm also here. You know, we were in the exact same role. So, don't be afraid. Also, my previous work experience was not like bougie internships, cool stuff like that. I had worked 
in, if you know Primark or Pennies, I'd worked there for three and a half-ish months and I had also worked in a more high-end boutique in my town, like in my small town, it's a very small local business, um, for eight months full-time before I left. So like don't be so worried, just apply to things. That's basically my point here. Um, you don't have to prove anything. I don't think they're necessarily looking for someone who has all the bells and whistles on their application. But there are things that will help, which I will get into now. So things that I believe help in applying for a UN internship are, obviously they're not discriminating against anyone, let me put that out there, that that's something they are very conscious of. And I will say, as a workplace, it was a very enjoyable workplace. Uh, it had a very good atmosphere. I think that's because there was such a variation in people's backgrounds, in ages, uh, and in gender. I really think that that helps so much. Um, but I do believe it probably would help if you are female, just because of gender parity is a big, big thing for the current Secretary General, uh, Antonio Guterres. Uh, and it was for Ban Ki-moon and people previously, but it's something that they're actively trying to resolve. So I believe it might be, it might, I don't even know what the statistics are like for interns, but there's always those statistics about how women are less likely to apply for things that they don't fully qualify for, whereas men will apply to things much more loosely. Uh, so take that into account and just apply. Um, I think if you speak multiple languages that probably helps. I don't, I I actually, that's not true. I have a little bit of multiple languages, but none of them, except for my mother tongue, are the like official six. I'll list the official six here if I get them wrong, but I hope I know that they're English, French, Spanish, Arabic, Chinese, and Russian, and then it's also available on floor, but that's just like webcast things. So I don't speak any of those languages except for English. Uh, I do have some Irish, I have a good bit of German, and a few words of Mandarin, but I don't have anything else. So um, the few words of Mandarin is really just so I can converse with children. That's ba that is basically it. And can I could take care of children when I volunteered in China, so wasn't that helpful, but all the same. As far as your education, I think having a degree that relates to what you want to intern in helps a lot. Uh, most of the people that came in are, in my department are like communications journalism type background. Uh, I'm obviously not in politics and information and social computing. One of the guys I worked with studied sociology, another one studied, you, I don't know what he actually studied. Sorry, Matt. Uh, he studied, he had a background in journalism though. And then the other guy had two master's degrees and uh, worked kind of in data analytics. That's the word I'm looking for. So really don't let it hold you back because they do bring in people who are from all different backgrounds, uh, like academic backgrounds. Uh, so don't let that put you off, honestly, is what I'm trying to say. Um, but yeah, when I'm applying to internship type things, and this is the only, like jobs, internships, the only, circ they're the only circumstance that I will ever use the phrase, what's for you won't pass you. And I don't necessarily believe in that for lots of other things in life. Um, and I believe in maybe trying again and keep trying, keep trying, keep trying. But if it's supposed to happen, then it will happen then. Uh, if you aren't getting the internships that you want, it's not for you right now. That's why it's not happening. I do believe, you know, it, it, it's wild that this was the only internship I was offered before I left of the 50 I applied to. I didn't interview with anyone else. I didn't speak to anyone else. So, you know, remember that in the whole internship search process. Okay, so a big one I get on Instagram all the time is like, what department should I apply for? Which is the, you know, best one to get into? Which is the easiest one to get into? Blah, blah, blah. How did you get your internship? And I said, I don't know. I think it's because some of them are easier to get into than others. They're like, okay, which ones are hard to get into? Which ones are easier to get into? I don't know. I just assume that some are more popular than others. Uh, I applied to internships in... Will I bring them up? Okay. So... So I'm not going to use department names because they've actually changed a lot of them. Um, they had kind of a restructuring thing. So if you see some old of those, you know, those diagrams 
I'll maybe link that di the diagram that I'm talking about down below uh, and I'll insert it over me for a second. Uh, it kind of explains the structure of the UN but uh, a lot of what I'm interested in was peacekeeping. So a lot of, so I was intern for something I applied to was disarmament, demobilization and reintegration. Uh, that was in DP, it was DPKO, is it still DPKO? Children in armed conflict, that was another kind of area. A lot of peace operations, peacekeeping operations, public information, public affairs for things like that because the public affairs was something I had a, like experience in and then web TV. But yeah, looking back, most of mine were peacekeeping. And I did meet someone when I was at an intern event who was in peacekeeping. And boy, was he more accomplished than I was. So, obviously, it's a more competitive internship to get. Um, I'm actually going on to study de peace and development studies uh, as my master's degree in September. So, it's something I'm still interested in, even more so now than I was before. But be open to different departments. I know that there are a lot of internships in the uh, Department of Global Communications, DGC, which previously was the Department of Public Information, DPI. So that's what you'll see on some of those diagrams, they might be kind of confusing. Um, but I feel like the public affairs, public information type of internships are maybe easier to get into? I don't know. So I think peacekeeping, I would say things to do with Security Council, like if there was anything where you'd be involved in any way in Security Council, like that's gonna be hard to get into. Like, I actually met an Irish girl who had interned for the office of the, for the President of the General Assembly, I believe it was. I can't remember what the exact title is. It's gonna, it'll be on that diagram I've linked down below. Um, but she interned there, and then she was interning at. Um, the International Labour Organization, ILO. So that's another thing to look at, is not just UN Secretariat kind of stuff, there's always the ILO, there's UNICEF, you know, they're in different buildings, but they're still amazing internships to get. Uh, as I said, I intern, I applied to intern at the United Nations Fund as part of Girl Up. There's also the UN, it's called the Global Compact Unit, so it must be like United Nations Global Compact Unit, and that is the part of the UN that deals with the private sector, I believe, and I met a couple of people, specifically Dante, who interned there. So that's another one, and I believe there were like 12 interns in her department, so it's another one to look at. Another thing I did notice was that I was just a little bit younger, uh, if not a good bit younger than a lot of the interns, which is surprising. I thought that they'd all be like my age, um, but one of the guys in my department was literally a month older than me, and then I think the next kind of age you would get for interns were master's students. Um, that was kind of what I was seeing and a lot of the time that's because your master's program will um, give you a, what do you call it, they give you the cash money for doing your uh, internship if it's not paid because UN internships are not paid, none of them are paid, you'll learn that very quickly, it's because they can't afford to pay you, that's frankly it and no it's not good labour rights and stuff like that but it is how it is, that's a video for another time. It's something I've actually drafted a blog post on, but not this video because it's already super long. So I've been talking for so long and I'm so sick, my throat hurts so much, so I'm gonna leave it here. I hope this video was somewhat helpful to you or just kind of clears things up for you. I have some other videos, I'll link the playlist here uh, in like my UN internship series. And if you have any questions, be sure to ask me, ask me on Instagram. I'm I will get notifications for that but my notifications for YouTube are always all over the place so I don't always see comments until it's like three weeks later um, but you can always ask them down below either and leave any video requests on Instagram or here that you want to see about UN internships, internships in general or anything else from me and that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. Please subscribe to my channel to see more videos like this or lots of other content from me. I'm actually very much like into style and beauty kind of things but I've been doing a lot of vlog and internship stuff recently. Um, I also have a couple DIYs that are going to be coming up pretty soon so 
yeah, they're done. I just need to edit that video. So, as I said, that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope it was helpful to you. And I will see you in my next video.